I want to bring in uh, presidential historian and Pulitzer Prize winning biographer John Meacham. And John, I, I want to also step back for a minute to help us with the big picture context here. I mean, this has only happened three other times in American history. And I think Nancy right. Pelosi felt the weight of it. You absolutely could see it in her face. So this morning, as you wake up as a historian, what are you thinking? Well, this is what the framers were thinking about. You know, it's tricky sometimes to try to bring the framers into the present. You know, it's, it's hard to bring them in and say, what do you think about robotics? You know, you, you can't do that historically. But it's very clear from the documents we have from the 1780s that they were particularly concerned about foreign influence in our domestic politics, in our search for a more perfect union. There's an explicit uh, provision in the Constitution that you can't accept a foreign title of nobility. You know, th there's this sense that we know how the last 240 years have gone. We've been an independent country and we've fought off threats and we've endured. They had no idea whether we would last. And so they were trying to build, if you will, a kind of guardrail around American politics, around the republic that would keep the Spanish, the French, the British from turning the United States into a European-like zone where you would have spheres of influence. And so this was very much on their minds, that American officers, officers of the American government should be focused on the sovereignty of the United States. And in that it, service of that idea, they divided sovereignty. And that's why we have checks and balances. It's why it's so hard to get anything done uh, in the American system. You know, if, if you really want something, if you want universal background checks, if you want Medicare for all, uh, you're frustrated by the fact that th our sovereignty is divided. It's tricky to do things. But the plus side of that is it's also hard for bad things to happen very quickly. And I think where we are historically is our other impeachments have all come at moments of, of immense national stress when we were confronting seemingly existential questions. So Andrew Johnson in the 1860s was about what was the verdict of the Civil War? What did the Civil War really mean? And because Andrew Johnson was trying really in many ways to undo that verdict by pursuing an agenda of white supremacy, he faced impeachment. Uh, President Nixon uh, in the early 1970s, that was a significant moment. We forget this now, but Vietnam d divided us as ferociously, if not more so, than anything today. And that was uh, both with the Cold War and with Vietnam and the cultural upheavals of the uh, 60s and 70s, that was part of what was going on. The Clinton impeachment, which now seems uh, less significant, was about a generational shift in American life. From the World War II generation to the baby boomers, there was Republican conservative uh, angst about uh, the direction that Clinton seemed to be taking the country. And now we have our populist reaction in 2016 to globalization, its challenges, the pressures on the middle class, the pressures on the working class, have all found expression in identity politics and in the rise of Trump. And so th there's a big issue here. And into that comes a president who has self-evidently, and this is not a partisan point, he has said, yeah, I did these things. Yeah. Uh, yes, I can shoot someone. So question's gonna be, will the line that Speaker Pelosi has drawn, will a majority of Americans accept that that should in fact be the line? Well, you mentioned that during the Nixon years, there was this huge divide. There was a huge divide over the Vietnam yeah. War. There was a huge divide over over uh, the man that at the time they called Tricky Dick, right? Um, sure. But we're in a very divided time, a different time, and one exacerbated uh, very much again by the man who occupies the Oval Office. In 2019, John, do you believe, even as prescient as the founding fathers were, um, can impeachment be seen as a legitimate process in this kind of political environment? Can it play out as a legitimate process? That's the great hope. And that's the, you, you put your finger on the essential question. And the other the part of that is what percentage of Americans have to see it as legitimate for it to be legitimate? You're never going to get 100 percent. 
right? We're a big, disputatious, complicated country. 55, 60, 65 percent, do they have, is, is that the number? Uh, it's, it's a mysterious figure. Nixon, support for Nixon's impeachment didn't really take off until very late in the game. Watergate unfolded over 25 and a half months from the Watergate break-in. Watergate break-in was June 17th, 1972. Nixon left office uh, on August 9th, 1974. Uh, Johnson, they were trying to impeach Andrew Johnson mm -hmm. from the end of 1865 all the way through to when they finally did it in 67, 68. So the argument that has to be made, and I do hope that there are Republicans who will make this argument, is let's let the facts speak. Let's see what the facts say. Let's see what this memorandum of conversation says. Let's see what the whistleblower report says, and then make a rational decision. You can do nothing more true to the founding principles yeah. of this country than to make a rational decision about a passionate and divisive topic. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.